Hello. In this video, we're going to make another Hello World program, but this one is going to be GUI based, meaning it will be a graphical user interface. Any program you use in Windows is a GUI program. A GUI program essentially is a program that has a number of buttons you can press, which is a graphical user interface is taking input from the user. Now, GUI programs are challenging to write when you get into them, but we can take advantage of some, some classes that come with Java to do a lot of the legwork for us. So, let's begin. We're going to start by going up to reporting period demo one demo. We're going to right click, and you could do this in any project you have running. And we're going to say new, and we're going to select new class. Now just at this point I also want to point out is you have a, a shortcut button up here where you can select a new class right from there. I hit new class and it pops right up for me. We're going to call this hello world GUI and remember if we do this um, we need to start with a capital letter and there can't be any spaces. Everything else is going to be the same except I want to include public static void main strings arcs you really should memorize that header. In the past when I've taught this course I haven't shown students how to have the IDE we're using generate it. I am now but you still have to memorize that. It's something that just should be second nature. In fact it'll be the first question on your test. <laughs> so I'm gonna hit finish now and so here's my hello world GUI and remember any code that I want to write I start in the main method. Java programs, when you execute them, always begin from the main method. So I'm going to get rid of this comment here. So I mentioned that to make our Hello World GUI, we're going to take advantage of a pre-built class. Remember how I said that classes always should start with a capital letter? You can actually write a class with a small case letter. However, programming convention dictates that people use uppercase letters. And what that means is that any program I use, if I see a word that is capitalized, I can assume it's a class. A class has a whole bunch of built-in code that you can take advantage of. So we're going to use a class called JOptionPane. And you'll see, if I type in JOptionPane, we want to notice two things here. One, that there's initially an X next to it. Now what that X means is that there's a problem with that line of code. And it gives you a list of the various problems that could be associated with it. After you've put the dot, it gives you a list of all the methods that are associated with this class. So you can think of these as little segments of code that the computer can execute that have been written by someone else. You just have to know how to use them. So we're going to scroll down here and we're going to use one called show message dialog and you'll notice there's two of them here so the next thing to note is that if you hang over it you get it, it expands if you click on it you'll see here on the side this is the documentation associated with this very important we learn how to properly read this documentation let's make this a little bigger the reason why it's so important to re be able to read this documentation is programming really comes down to stealing other people's code and I say that in jest really because programming has evolved to the point where you end up using a lot of pre-written code and you have to be able to read this documentation to understand how to use it so the way we read it is as follows this word here means what it returns void means it returns nothing this is the name of the method so in this case it's show message dialog What's contained inside the brackets are what are called component, sorry, are what are called parameters. We're at the point in our programming career where we don't know what a component is yet or what an object is. So at this point, I'm just going to tell you that this requires two things. The component part is always going to be null in our case. So I'm going to double click this and see how it pops up. And so we're going to say null. The component simply means if you were going to put this inside of another window, you can tell it where to put it. But for now, we're going to use the word null, and null in computer science at this point, we can think of it as meaning nothing. The next thing is the message. So 
So the message here is going to be hello world GUI. And then I put a semicolon. Now what you might have noticed at one point is you might have noticed up here that this line appeared. This is an import statement. And Eclipse will automatically generate a lot of these import statements for you. But it's important to know where they come from. If you're using classes that are built into Java, you have to tell the program where they are. And we'll explore those in more detail later. If I delete this line here, let's just delete this for a second, you'll see this will become an X. So what you can do here is you can, if you ever have a situation like this, you can right click on this. Oh. You can come to this. Ah, there we go. We can left click on it and we can say import J option pane. And you'll watch. If you click this, there's our import statement appears. So now we save this and we run it. And there is my hello world GUI. It is a pop up. All the code is pre written that makes this window appear and do these things. And the program actually stops until I click the OK button. So if I make another one, let's make another one, J option pain.show message dialog always null. Hello again. And now if I let's hit debug this time. We're not going to open up that perspective now. We just want to run this. Actually, let's use save and run. Let's actually execute it. So now if we execute it, we get hello world GUI, OK, and then hello again. The program is actually pausing until the user clicks that button. I hope that helped.